Hey everybody, <clears throat> how's everybody doing this evening? Hey, Colorado Adventure Club. Hey, Jeff, Garth. Welcome, everybody. Welcome back to the stream. We'll give everybody a few minutes to join, as always. Sound delicious to me too, Joe. I'll take some turkey or some ham or some Canadian bacon. I'll take that too. not picky on thick or thin as long as it's bacon. I'm great. <laughs>
All right, let's get started. <clears throat> and yeah, Garth, that's why I chose it, is it does look like a old 80s video game with the <laughs> old vector graphics, right? <laughs> yeah, that's why I chose it. I thought it looked cool. So hopefully everybody's doing good this weekend. Um, yeah, the weather's definitely changing here in Colorado as well. It was almost uh, freezing last night here, so it's definitely getting colder every night. Um, so we'll go ahead and get started with what we're printing tonight. And I thought we would uh, start, you know, printing some things from Maker World and start using um, stuff from that. And I thought this little fidget spinner with these cool little gears would be a cool one to print uh, this evening. And it only takes about 57 minutes to print. Yeah, very synthwave Tron. Yeah, Tron and uh, I think of Outrun, if anybody ever played um, that game. Kind of the sunset looks like Outrun, and then the vector graphics look like uh, Tron. And then Andre King. Yeah, I'm in Colorado, northern Colorado. Hey, Renee, welcome back to the stream. So we'll go ahead and get um, started on this one. And again, uh, what we're doing different tonight is I usually get stuff from printables or from Thingiverse, but I thought we would get something from Maker World uh, this evening. So I got this one. And what's cool about this is it shows the times um, that it's going to take to print with two colors, the larger model, uh, better accuracy. And there's even more of them down here and you just click on here and it opens up in Bamboo Studio. So it's pretty cool to use this. So I'll try to use more and more models from here, but uh, pretty cool to be able to do that. And it's good to see uh, Bamboo uh, definitely reinvesting into the community. And that's definitely really good to see. So I went ahead and uh, loaded everything in here, clicked on that and let it load the model in here. And uh, one of the cool things that you can do in here is say we want to change the color of all of these objects. We could click on every one of these little tiny objects and try to get everything in, and push the number on our keyboard and do the little trick like we do on that. But another thing that we can do is just go to objects right here. And if you just click on the first one, hold down the shift key and click on the last one. Now I can just change it to whatever color I want, which happens to be the blue and it'll change all of them at the same time. So there's a little shortcut that you can use whenever you have a bunch of parts like this in order to change all of the colors at the same time. And then Andre and Peyton. Okay, nice. And you have some questions, feel free to ask um, any of the questions that you have. And we will go ahead and get this sliced and get this ready to go. Let me go put the plate, uh, the texture plate in the uh, printer real quick while it slices. And this will be a pretty good test for this uh, for the PEI plate with these little tiny parts right here. Um, so we may see a print failure on here. As you guys know, we have lots of failures on the live stream. So um, we'll see how this textured plate um, does on there. It did hold up to like my 45 degree angle stuff on the test and everything. I haven't really printed, printed anything this small on there just yet, but we'll see what it does. And then Lester, what is the maker scene like in Northern Colorado? Is there any additive manufacturing industry out there? Um, I'm not, I'm not too sure. I've only lived here three years now. 
uh, command key on Mac. Yeah, whatever. Is it command? I think it's still shift on Mac. And then Andre, do you run basic PLA for all of your prints? I made a dragon with ABS and it came out great. The only issue is when I went to reprint, it clogged. Um, did you dry out the ABS before you printed with it? Most stuff I print is with PLA. Um, it does seem to print a little bit easier. It doesn't need the higher temperatures or anything like that. Most of the stuff that I print with ABS or you might try ASA. Um, honestly, ASA is probably better than ABS um, because it has all the same characteristics as ABS, but it's also UV resistant or weather resistant. Um, <clears throat> so make sure that you dry out those filaments, um, really, really well, um, with the ABS or ASA. I did not clean the plate, Joe. No, I don't micro focus on stuff too much. We'll see what it does. If it uh, fails, I'll clean the plate and we'll try it again. Um, but we'll see what it does. <laughs> I have a, um, <clears throat> I think I have like two prints on it since the last time I cleaned it, Joe. So it's not like crazy dirty, but we'll see what it does with these uh, tiny little pieces right here. Should be interesting. Uh, but Andre, for the most part, um, or Andre, uh, for the most part, I run uh, PLA mostly. When I'm uh, doing stuff for the garage and out in the shop and stuff, I'll do ABS or ASA. All right, and then I didn't see anything new um, on the website. They still have the filament on sale, but I didn't see any new types of filament or anything like that. And I didn't see anything in the accessory stuff. Did any, does anybody else see anything new on here? I didn't see anything new for this week. And then Andre, I think you, I did, but I can pull it out and dry it again. Yeah, so on the ABS, if you're using uh, like bamboo's filament, for example, I believe they recommend ADC for eight hours inside there. Yeah, ADC for eight hours. And there is under the little gear and utilities right there on the X1, there's a filament drying thing and you can set the temperature and the time that you want to do that. Uh, so make sure that you do that, Andre. And then Bob, <laughs> I'd move to Colorado if I didn't have to clean out my basement. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> and then Jeff, I couldn't find the new vibration feet the other day. So I think Jeff, they're still here. It just shows the picture of the old ones. See how it's the old ones and when you hover, it's the new ones. And then when you click in here, you have to click version two, even though it still shows the old one. They, they kind of got this jacked up here, but it's just right there on the version two, Joe. And then Joe, my budget prevents me from looking for anything new right now. That's funny. And then Andre K makes sense. I'm learning all the differences in the filament and no. I didn't see anything new. Yeah, the there's this thing uh, right here. And the other thing, Andre, to look up is the Bamboo Filament Wiki. And it has this, there's this filament guide right, right here. And this is super cool. It has everything that you need to know, which nozzle types, if you need the hardened steel nozzle or not all of the different types of filament, the recommended temperatures, 
build plate settings, if you need glue, if you can use the liquid glue, all of this stuff. Uh, so, Andre, if you're new, make sure that um, you're using this guide uh, before you print everything and just make sure you go through everything. This would be super helpful for you as you're getting used to everything. And then Garth, why this plate versus the gold plate? I'm using the gold plate for the print tonight. I don't know if you're asking me that question. Then Glenn, is there any filament which is UV resistant so that it could be used for outside work? ASA is uh, what you want to use for that. ABS and ASA are very similar um, in their properties. ASA um, allows or has more UV resistant for outside stuff. Outdoor use for long term purpose. And then Jeff, it's back. And that is nice. Colorado Venture Club, Lester, Colorado seems like a nice place to be. Do you enjoy being there? I do enjoy being here, and I'm originally from New Mexico, which is just south of Colorado. Um, so I enjoy being back in this part of the country. And then Andre Garth <clears throat> answered Glenn's question, ASA as well. And honestly, anything that you need for heavy duty purpose, ABS or ASA, uh, they're basically the same stuff. But if you can only buy one, get ASA because it can be used for indoor and outdoor use. And then Andre, okay, thank you. I will look that up. I know the PLA CF, they say to use the hardened a steel nozzle for that and for the carbon fiber filaments Andre I've um, had better luck with the 0.6 millimeter nozzle even though I don't think it necessarily recommends it may say highly right yes it's highly recommended for the 0.6 but it says it works with the 0.4 nozzle um, I've I get I've had a couple of my nozzles clog up uh, with the carbon fiber on the 0.4, but I haven't had very many issues with the 0.6. You don't get that uh, same like quality of print. Like you can kind of see the lines a little bit more when you print with the 0.6, but with the carbon fiber, I've had more luck with that. And then I'll look at it tonight. Thank you again. You're welcome, Andre. Again, any carbon fiber or GF filament will need a hardened nozzle. Yeah, and if you buy replacement nozzles, just get the hardened nozzle. Don't even mess around with the other ones. ASA is easier to print, they say. I thought um, between the, I did the video on ABS and the video on ASA, um, I thought the same thing as well, Colorado Adventure Club. It seemed, um, it seemed much easier to print. Um, there wasn't any issues with it at all, but ABS seems to print very well as well but it, i'll say um they both do have a little bit of a smell they don't even stink up the little room that it's in but asa seems to stink less at least for me then andre you got the point eight and the point four clogs yeah uh get the point six the point eight might be a little bit big um but it pro it'll be better than the point four yeah, ABS can warp crazy. ASA also, I've heard of warping as well. Uh, make sure <clears throat> if you're printing a larger object with ABS or ASA, make sure to uh, preheat your chamber um, with the X1. And that can seem to help. And uh, maybe, you know, don't open the door. Make sure that the temperature of the chamber stays the same temperature. You're limited to the extruder's capacity to mount with larger nozzles. Yeah, I've had luck, Andre, with the 0.6. Uh, if you look at all, I did a, almost all of the carbon fibers. One of my uh, next videos coming up will be the PA6. That's the only one I think on here that I haven't done. Um, but I used the 0.6 millimeter nozzle with all of those. Um, and I had a lot of success. I didn't have any clogging or anything like that. And everything was good to go. 
And then Travis, I sent pics of my latest work and photos. East Coast Rep Rap Festival. Awesome. That Rep Rap Festival was uh, here in Colorado. Me and Colorado Adventure Club went to it. Let's check in on the print real quick. And yay, it looks like it's not printing anything. Oh, no, there it goes. I think we just got it right on. Colorado Adventure Club, I've had one clog in seven months. And then, Joe, I heard the new Bamboo X will include a heated chamber. That would be pretty cool. All right, let's let this get through a layer or two, and we'll pull up some pictures while it's printing here. And let's see, I think Justin was first to the inbox today. And Kansas City Chiefs thing, that's really cool. And that's real good quality of the lettering. And not a lot of it's hard with the white, um, especially with darker colors with the white. If you look at one of my first videos with uh, Snoopy, it's real hard to not uh, get bleeding in that. So that turned out really, really good. Uh, what is, um, did you change any of the, uh, what's that setting called? The... Uh, No, it's not the, the flushing volume. In order to get that, uh, cause the, mixing the white and the darker uh, colors is, is a challenge. You got to watch out for those colors bleeding through. 0.7 on the flushing. Wow. Wow. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah, that came out so clean. There is no bleeding of color at all in there. Yeah, really good. That's that's awesome. So 0.7 on the flushing volume. Good to know. All right, let's check that first layer. Well, there's the little thing right there, but we'll see what it does. And then Lester, random, what mic are you using? It's honestly some cheapo from uh, Amazon. Let me read the name of it. Um, the... FI fine microphone. And we'll see what it does with that. So let's go to the next print that we have. And let's see, next to send something in was uh, Renee again. Let me download these real quick.
All right, Mandalorian helmet. Was this uh, the one that was on Maker World, Renee? This one looks super cool. Yeah, look how good the quality is on that. That that was really good. Yeah, the matte finish looks cool. It looks really good, Renee. And these ghosts look pretty cool, too. What is the little light that you have under them? These are pretty cool. Is it blaster proof? Now that's funny. Electric tea lights. That's what I was thinking. Is it the little tea lights? That looks really good. Whatever those little lights are, they look really good. Yeah, tea lights. Cool. And love me some Star Wars. Yeah, anything Star Wars probably going to get a lot of play on this channel. <laughs> that's for sure. All right, let's see who's next on the list here. Looks like Joe sent some pictures. Let me get all of these downloaded. This looks really cool. Grab a box of tea lights from Ikea. Is that a good spot to get them? <laughs> this is the way. That's funny. This is a cool box. Cool little storage box. Is this the one that we were talking about uh, last week, I believe, too? And then Joe, oh, they're cheap at uh, Ikea. I'll have to check that out. And then Travis want to sell the pumpkins with flickering electronic tea lights, but can't find one with commercial licensing. Interesting. Yeah, the bamboo logo on this tab right there is really neat. I like the colors that you used on this too. Really neat. Yeah, the different finishes on everything are cool. This looks really, really nice. Yeah, this would be a good project, Jeff. I'd like to make this box someday, too. This is a good project. But how long does it take to print? All together, you think? It's probably a couple of days, I would imagine, but that's a good, good little project to print. Tony Stark inspired colored scheme. <laughs> That's funny, Lester. <laughs> I'm not sure about the green, but yeah, the red and yellow. <laughs> That's funny. Three days. That is not bad. For all of that with the multicolor, the different stuff, textures and all that. That is not bad. Three days. That's not bad at all. Not at all. I got the little engine one as well. The little engine that could. <laughs> yeah, this is a neat little uh, storage compartment and a good little print project. If you 
just got your uh your bamboo or you're looking for that next project this is a really good one to do yeah, and three days that's not bad that's really not bad Yeah, and it stores everything very nice. I like that. And a place for the cables and tubes and stuff. Yeah, that's really slick. Okay, so far three 60 millimeter drawers and one 90 millimeter top. I plan to add three 30 millimeter drawers and two plate storage units. Really, really neat. And it's cool that it's modular too, and you can stack and everything on there. It's really cool. Really good project. All right, let's check in on the print and see if we have failure and we do. <laughs> the plate failed. Uh, so let me go uh, clean the plate and we'll try that again. And we'll see if it'll do those little tiny parts. Let me go uh, wash it real quick. All right, sometimes on this channel we learn what to do and what not to do. <laughs> 
So we'll just move over to the uh, cool plate on this one. We won't mess around with the uh, textured plate. And we'll go ahead and get this thing printing. And yeah, Lester said modularity is the way to go. Great work. Yeah, that turned out really good. I have to give all the credit to the model designer. Truly is a work to be appreciated, that's for sure. Then Joe, I saw someone on another channel use Bamboo X1 colors, and it looks fantastic sitting to the X1, I bet, so. Yeah, it does not look like a gold plate. Yeah, I put the cool plate. We're not going to mess around. All right, let's see who's next. Thank you, everybody, for uh, sending in your prints this evening as well. We got a lot of them tonight. All right, looks like Travis sent us quite a few here. Let me get them all downloaded real fast. All right. <clears throat> this looks like pictures from Rep Rap. If you remember all of this stuff, I remember seeing all of this stuff. Uh, Colorado Adventure Club. That looks cool. all out the east coast one was bigger and had more they had quite a bit of stuff for here i was super surprised for northern colorado About 70 outside at the ERF. That's <clears throat> pretty nice. On the dogs. 12 mil, uh, 0.12 millimeter layer height, 1500 layers. Wow. <laughs> Must have taken a year to print. That's funny. These keychains are my biggest order fulfilled so far. They bought 50 of them for $5 each. Wow, good job, Travis. 
They will be gifts for the people who donate to the volunteer fire department. Wow, that's really awesome. Good job on that. <clears throat> 17 minutes each, <clears throat> 10 hours. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Good job. It's good to hear stuff like that. And hopefully that's uh, inspiration to others that are listening on the uh, stream tonight and, and later on. And doing things in the local community, great ways to earn a little side hustle or, you know, sell a couple of these things. So good job with that. This one looks really nice too. Travis, I have no idea what happened. Something like $950 in income in the last two weeks, and I've only been 3D printing four months now. That's really good. That's really good, Travis. And Lester, any insight on protecting designs I'd want to market? Yeah, I don't know. I'm not a... Uh, lawyer can give any legal advice or anything like that but if you have something that you think's worth a lot of money i would speak to somebody with more legal profession than myself so that's oh, okay that's the other side of the coin all right or of the tag nice Then Colorado Adventure Club, where do you find your customers? Travis, word of mouth and business cards. Put yourself out there. Local bars and businesses, they make a good fit. Yeah, local community, these places, um, you know, signs and, you know, Different little things like this, great ways um, to find those customers. And that's great advice, Travis. Asking the audience in general, I have some IP, but 3D files seem hard to protect. Yeah, that's where I don't, like, what do you do with them? And I see people putting, like, their designs and stuff on Etsy or whatever and different places and on their own websites and being able to license uh, that stuff out, right? Um, but I don't know. If, if you have some stuff, Lester, I would uh, maybe try to find somebody that has either done it before or somebody in the legal field there. So you definitely, if you have some intellectual property that's worth money, you definitely don't want to mess that up. Make sure you dot all your I's and cross all your T's with that, because if you don't, that's where people run into trouble. And then Travis, my niece, works for this fire department as an EMT, so she helped me secure it. Uh, yeah, word of mouth. The cheapest and most effective form of advertising is word of mouth. It's the best and it's free. <laughs> it works the best and it's the, the free. It's the, it costs the least. Um, so word of mouth, that's all great advice, Travis. All right, let's look at the SR-71 Blackbird. I actually uh, got to see one of these when I was a little kid in Pima County Air Museum in uh, Arizona. Very impressive uh, piece of machinery there. And then Bob, provisional patent is cheap and good for one year. That's good advice. Yeah. 
And this was with uh, the carbon fiber PLA. Turned out nice. Yeah, that's the right finish for uh, that plane, right? Yeah, the free roll. I came with the free roll. That's funny. And I'm assuming this is from Rep Rep as well. Which one is that? The colors on this look cool. Is this the giant printer? I remember they had one there with that was giant in Colorado Adventure Club. It'd be perfect for what you're trying to do. You could print four of those things at the same time. Remember that big old giant thing? You'd never seen vorons before this event yeah i'd seen them online but i'd never seen one in person and the one we went to they were uh putting one together and it looked like super duper complicated it was around the bamboo size yeah i remember they had like a giant one there the giant one is in the pick with the whole event Oh, it's right there, right? That's what Colorado Adventure Clubs right <laughs> needs right now is this big old giant printer. Nice. Was that all of the pictures that she sent? I believe it was. All right, everything seems to be doing better on there. And I'm using the liquid glue on the cool plate. If you're still using the cool plate or need to, uh, that liquid glue works pretty well. I'm, a bit, I'm becoming a bigger and bigger fan. When you have to use glue, that stuff uh, works pretty good. All right, thank you for all of those photos, Traver, Travis. Appreciate that. And then looks like Jeff sent us some more cool stuff. Um, I'm guessing this might be from the dealership as well. Let me get these downloaded. And we got some Cummins. And I think, uh, yeah, with some lights in there, that looks really cool. And Colorado Adventure Club been on the helmet kick and costume armor. And then Lester 3D print all the things. <laughs> And this looks really good as well. Um, Jeff, you always had some really cool prints. The pumpkin, the Jeep with the pin holder, and this looks pretty cool as well. And if you're enjoying the stream, go ahead and uh, hit that like button. It helps me out. I appreciate everybody watching this evening. 
And uh, definitely appreciate everybody sending in some pictures. <laughs> You're making those pen holders right now still. Dude, you could sell the crap out of those things if you wanted to. You could probably start a whole print farm with those things. Just a hint. Throw those things on Etsy. You can sell the crap out of them. And this looks really good too. Cool little light and everything. They paid for my first printer and I keep spending the money on the filament. Sounds like a pretty good deal to me. <laughs> Sounds like a great deal to me. <laughs> and then how'd you light it? Color separation is perfect. Yeah. And we can see that that was on the texture plate as well. That turned out really nice. Did you uh, change any of the flushing volumes or anything like that, Jeff, for this one? Again, the white and the dark colors. Be careful with the flushing volumes. And then Jeff just used the LED strips on the back of TV or for the back of TVs for the light. Yeah, the sharp details, really, really nice. Very, very good quality. All right, let's check back in on the print. Looks like everything's good to go. And let's see, looks like we got everybody. If anybody else has a picture they want to send in, go ahead and send it in. We have a couple more minutes here and get to one more. Use arcane wall generator for them. Interesting. Good tip. And yes, you were talking about the arcane walls uh, last night, Colorado Adventure Club. That is correct. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. Everybody start experimenting with the arcane walls. I've used it on the uh, spiral stuff before, but I haven't used it on other stuff. So that's a, that's a good tip. And yeah, we'll have to do some more stuff with that. All right, any other questions or anything out there with the last couple minutes that we have? Anybody want to make a guess? Yeah, let's all type in the chat and make a guess of when the next bamboo printer will come out. What month does everybody think uh, that will come out? Put your guess in the chat and we'll come back and we'll see who was right and who was wrong.
Yeah, and then if anybody wants to share uh, marketing advice for helping to protect uh, some IP, please reach out to Lester and help him out with that. And sorry, I couldn't be more help for you, Lester, but hopefully somebody can help you with that. Joe, with the hot take of November, beginning of the holiday season, I yeah, I could agree with that. I could definitely see that. No, yeah, Garth, if they were smart, November, get the Christmas sales. I agree. I think January-ish, though, but uh, in November, Black Friday, Cyber Monday, all of that, that would be uh, very smart of them to take advantage of that. And they just, all they got to do is just hit the scale button right here, right? <laughs> just scale that thing up. <laughs> Scale it up and print it out. I'll I'll buy it. Just kidding. That's so funny. And Bob, another one with January. And in the last couple minutes, we'll see what Little Chris Mode does to this. I'll buy the scaled up one. I need a bigger bamboo storage box. That's funny. <laughs> That's awesome. That is a definitely a good reason for it. That's pretty funny. Protecting IP tends to require deep pockets. Taking legal action is expensive. And if they are out of the country, near impossible. Yep. I, I would agree. That's why. Uh, that's a tough. That's a tough one, man. That's a tough one, Garth. All right, we got just a couple of seconds left here. I'll go ahead and uh, sign out. Yeah, patents are pricey and take a long time. I would agree. So we'll go ahead and wrap it up. I appreciate everybody spending some time with me on Saturday night. Hopefully you found this enjoyable. Smash that like button on your way out. Um, appreciate everybody for sending in your pics. I'll see you next Saturday. Uh, get out there and print some stuff and uh, take some pictures of it so we can all see what you do and, you know, good luck out there selling it and, uh, you know, doing some cool stuff with your 3d printer. I uh, hope everybody has a great weekend. I'll see y'all tomorrow for the video. Don't miss it. And, uh, see you next week on the live stream. Thank you everybody. Bye.